I've had several requests to assist with using Cricut and the files that I create for some of my products. So I thought I would start by using the one that I just put out, which is the Stuffed Envelope Mini Album. Before we get started, I wanted to mention that I did notice some items that were incorrect in the bundle. And I do apologize for that. I was rushing to get it out and I can see how I made errors. <laughs> so if you picked up the bundle when I first released the video, October 26th through the 27th, you may have received a bundle that has a missing page, which was the belly band page in the sizing guide, as well as the size for one of the envelope front deco patterns had the wrong size as well. If you made a donation, I sent you a message providing an updated guide. If you purchased the bundle anonymously, I have no way of knowing who got it. So you can drop me an email using the email in the description box below, or you can send me a message in Kofi, and I would be happy to send you the updated sizing guide. Again, my apologies. So on the screen here, I have my video. If you go down to the description box, there's a more button. Just click on that and you'll find that in the watch area, I link back to the walkthrough of this video so you can easily find it there as well as some other links. And then under links, you'll find the stuffed envelope mini album cut file bundle Click on that link and it will take you out to my Kofi shop where you can pick up the free bundle. Let's just go ahead and walk through this. I'm going to hit zero and say, get it now. Just checking out and you click on view content. So here you're going to click the download button next to the name of what you just purchased. Click on that and here are all the files that are included. So I'm going to click on all these and just drag them over to a location that I have all of my other files. So I'm just dragging that over and now I can close out all of that. So as I mentioned, when you open the zip file, these are all the individual folders and files that you get. A JPEG folder will have all of the images in a JPEG format. In case you want to use that, you then have one in a PNG format and then one in an SVG format. Now you can only see the SVGs when you click on them. It'll open it up in your Explorer or if you have an Apple, I'm not sure what it's called. And you can also then see these when you upload them to your cutting machine software, which is what I'm going to help you with in a moment. You also get a project sheet and this gives you all the details on what needs to be cut, the size of everything. This is going to be your go-to guide. It even has photos in there so that you can reference back to how something may have looked, but this will help you through it. I did highlight areas where there are magnets only because I usually forget the magnets. So I thought that might be helpful for you. <laughs> But this is a very helpful guide. And then you also have the sizing guide. Now this is also for those that are creating by hand and want to use the patterns. I encourage you to read through the front page just in case there's something there that might be of help. It does talk about how to print out the pages. You want to print them at actual size. Right here I mentioned that. And then it tells you everything that you get as well as where you can find the tutorials and walkthrough. Again, I added some photos here, but I do send a little message there usually at the top. The next page is the thumbnails. These are all the images that you get in the bundle. These have the names of each of the images so that you can cross reference them. I just tried to make it as easy as possible. I did create groups of images so that it will be easier for you to upload to your cutting machine software, which is what I'm going to show you in a moment. And then I go through and give you all the individual templates for this design. I provide the name of the template as well as the size, and these are actual sizes. Now, when there are images that are not actual sizes, which is what happens when we come to the belly band, the album belly band has one image that is not to actual size, 
Because this item was easy to cut out, I did not break this image up into two pieces just to add it on this eight and a half by 11 sized page. So for those cutting by hand, just use the sizing information here to cut out your item. These two images on the left-hand side, the add-on piece and bottom piece are to actual size. So you can use them as patterns. It's just this one piece. For those that are using the cut files, there's the cut file and you'll have no problem cutting this out. So now we're going to upload the files to Cricut Design Space, which is the cutting software that I use to typically cut out these items. Now I must say that I did use my brother scan and cut to cut out the medium weight chipboard for this project and it cut like butter. Um, but I'm sure that Cricut can do that as well. You may need to use a knife blade. I don't know because I didn't practice it. Someone can let me know and then I can share with others, but I'm sure it will have no problem as well in cutting that out. So the first thing you want to do is click on new project up here in the right hand corner. So you have a blank canvas on the left hand side, you're going to click upload and you will see an upload image button. So click on that. Now what I love about this is the drag and drop feature. So I typically have my Cricut Design Space window open on one side and then I have all my files open on the other side so I can just drag them over. It's so much easier. For uploading files into your cutting machine software, I recommend using the SVG files. So I'm gonna open that folder. Now you can upload individual images. So I'm going to take the front album cover and drag that over and drop it. And there's the image. Now I usually like to copy and paste the image name into the tag just so that I can find it later. And then down at the bottom right hand corner, you're gonna click upload. So here is the image that we just uploaded. I'm gonna click on that and down in the right hand corner, click add to canvas. When it uploads into Cricut Design Space, you get these extravagant sizing measurements. I don't know why it doesn't know how to import properly, but that's just how Cricut Design Space is. That's why I provided the sizing guide. So you open up your sizing guide and it will show what the measurements are. So that's where I get the measurements for resizing. So before I click off this image, I go ahead and resize it based on the images in the sizing guide. So 6.75, I'm gonna undo the lock and I'm going to just make sure this is 4.75. Even if it's close, I'm still going to resize it. And then I'm gonna put the lock back on. Now this is ready to be cut. But let me show you an easier way. So let's go to upload again. We're gonna click on the upload image. In the SVG files, you'll find two individual files that say all files, and then one that says album belly band. Each of these files have more than one image in them. So let's start with the belly band, just so I can show you that one. Again, I'm going to add that into the tags and click upload. Let's click that and add it to our canvas. Again, it brings it up at a really large sizing. So I'm going to bring in my sizing guide. I'm going to find the album belly band page. And as you see, these have individual sizing. Okay, so let's go back to thumbnails. On the thumbnail page, you'll find at the bottom that I included the group file size. So you're going to use these measurements when importing the images using the group file. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to resize this to 11.875. I'm going to unclick the lock 
and change the width to 4.746 and then lock that. Now this is still all one image. So I'm gonna move this one down, move this over. The next thing you want to do is click on the ungroup button over here on the right hand panel. And now these are individual files. What I like to do is click on one of the images. I go to the right hand side panel. I click on the lines. So you see the lines here. I click on the lines under that file name. If you click on one, hold the shift key and then click on the next line, you'll be able to get more than one line. So you see they're highlighted here. They're also highlighted over here on the screen. Go over into the operation area, click the down arrow, and then click on score. Now you want to click on the canvas and highlight these three images. When I highlight all of the images, you'll see on the right hand panel that that is a group. You want to go further down on the bottom and click on attach. So now they are all attached as one image. If you do not attach them, then they will be three individual images when you go to cut. So that's an important thing to remember. Now that I've showed you how to change lines to be score lines in a grouped image, let me show you how to change lines to score lines in an ungrouped image. And what I mean by that is when we click on the next image, if you look in the right hand side layers panel, you'll see the name and all of the images that go together to make up the album belly band. And this is actually the add on piece. Because this is all highlighted together, it means it's a grouped image. If I click the ungroup, you see that it changes them and they all become individual images. Now, if I want to change these inner lines to be score lines, you'd have to click on them individually on the canvas, or you could still do that over in the layers panel. When you're in the layers panel, you click on one, hold down the control key and click on the next image. Go over to the operation, click on score, and as you can see, we now have dotted lines, and those have all been changed to score lines. Let me show you another way. Another way to do it is click on the images themselves. Click on the line, go up to operation, and change it to score, and now you have your dotted line, which means it's a score line. The problem is, if you click on a line and you accidentally move it, then it's out of alignment. That's why I like working over in the layers panel. It's just much easier. So I'm going to go ahead and click on all of these lines and change them to score. Now I'm just going to capture all of these images for just this one item and go down and click attach. And now you'll see they're all attached. What's great about Cricut Design Space now is that you can rename them. So this is the add-on piece for the belly band. So now I'll know what that image is. So if we click on the next one, the first thing you want to do is check the sizing against the sizing guide. I'm going to go ahead and unlock it and update the sizing. Make sure you hit enter after each of the sizes that you put in there, click lock, and I'm going to click on the lines that are going vertical. Go to the operation area, click the down arrow, click score, and now they're all changed. Now because you do it that way, you don't have to ungroup and group everything. It's just so much easier. Next you want to select all of the images and attach. If you want to color code these images, you can certainly do that before cutting. Just click on the image. In the right hand layers panel, you're going to click the horizontal image, which is the main belly band piece, 
and then go back up to your operation. It'll say basic cut. There's a little square next to it. You can click on that and then pick any color that you want. Just do that for each of your images. Now we're ready to make it. In the upper right hand corner, there's a button that says make it. Just click on that. At the top, it'll tell you if you have an image that is beyond the size that Cricut recommends for their mats. Just click on the OK. As you can see here in the left hand panel, we have two different colors of mats, and that's because we color coded them. This is helpful when you want to use different materials on, to cut out each image. So let's say I wanted to use a solid color for the white and a pattern for the blue. Now you would be able to do that. The front album cover, you would just load your chipboard or cardstock and hit continue in the lower right hand corner. It will bring up a menu selection for your type of material, depending on what you're using. There's lightweight, there's heavyweight cardstock, you can click on this Browse All Materials to get a list of all of them that are available. And you can even use the little search bar at the top and type in chipboard and it will bring up the programmed options. If you're using medium weight, I would suggest going ahead to use the heavyweight chipboard setting. If you just click on that, you'll see it adds a little green check mark next to it, meaning that that's been selected and you can click done down at the bottom. Since we told it we wanted to use a heavyweight chipboard, it is telling you that you're going to need your knife blade. So you need to make sure that you have that to be able to cut heavyweight chipboard on the Cricut. Right now, I'm just going to say no because I wanna focus on the belly band since that one is oversized. So the first thing I wanna do when I click on that is you see it still has the same material setting as when I was on the front album cover. Well, we need to change that. So you can click the little down arrow over here on the right. I would recommend acetate. That is the preferred, I think it'll just be stronger. Or if you have heavy cardstock, that would be my other option that I would recommend. So the first thing it tells you is to load your scoring tool. And then the next thing we'll be loading is our fine point blade. So just make sure you have those blades available. Now we're ready to load our materials onto our Cricut cutting mat. Now I use my mat a lot, so I'm going to have a dirty mat. <laughs> and I also want to show you a little trick that you can do to cut images that are larger than the size that they recommend. So let's just go ahead and load our mat. When we typically load our materials onto the mat, we stay within the square that's on the mat, which is a 12 by 12 inch square. And that is the best way to do all your materials. However, when you have some images that are longer and Cricut thinks you need a larger mat. Sometimes what I have done is taken my materials and if you notice here when I cut, Cricut starts cutting at about a fourth of an inch down from the top of this square line and a fourth of an inch in from the sides. So what I have done is taken my materials and actually put it in between the top line and about a fourth of an inch. So about an eighth of an inch, I would bring my materials down. And what that does is provide a little wiggle room at the end. So the image is 11 and 7 eighths inch, which is plenty of room to cut out on this mat. However, Cricut does warn you that it's a larger size. So if you want to make sure that it's going to cut at that size, moving your material down about an eighth of an inch from the top, has it go over about an eighth of an inch beyond the 12 inch mark. What I also like to do is use some low tack tape 
or you can use washi tape. And that's only when your mat has been used quite a bit. And mine has been used a lot. You'll see a lot of people show you Cricut mats that are pristine, but I'm a user, so my materials are worn. <laughs> I've even used Scotch masking tape to hold my materials down, and this works really good also. So just add a little bit. Make sure your materials don't move. Now we're ready to load our materials onto our Cricut. You're going to hit the flashing up and down arrow to load your mat. And I'm going to unload the fine point blade that I have in there and put in my single wheel scoring tool. So you just set this down into the cartridge holder, close the little door on it, and then you'll see a blinking light. You want to press that light and it will start cutting. Now, if we look back at our screen, it says set up for next step, load your fine point blade. You'll also see that the machine is blinking again, telling you to, uh, you need to do something. So we're going to come back to the cartridge, open up our little door, remove the scoring wheel and put in our fine point blade. Go back over to the control panel here. It'll be blinking and press down on the icon. and your images have been cut. So let's just do a recap. I've shown you how to upload single images. I've shown you how to upload a group of images and change any lines to be score lines. What I have shown you is the same premise that you would use for all of your SVG files. But like I mentioned, when we go to upload and then upload image, there are two additional files that have all of the files in them. The other one is the envelope fronts. Here's all of the images. Just click upload. We can also then upload our album covers. Click upload and then you'll have these two images. Now I suggest putting these on the canvas one at a time. So let's do the envelope fronts first. Add to canvas down in the right hand corner. You can tell by this line here that that image is there. It's just super large. <laughs> We're going to use our sizing guide here. And as I mentioned, you'll find the group file size on the thumbnails and the individual sizes with the patterns, okay? So for this one, we need to change it to 16.092, click the unlock, and then change that height to be 10.401, and put the lock back on. Now I'm going to select all of the belly bands and group them together. So I'm coming over here to the right hand panel, clicking on group, and I'm going to hide them. So if you hover over the group name, you'll see this little eye. Just click on it and it will hide the image. I'm going to do the same thing with the front cover. And actually we could delete, well, I'm going to delete this because we're gonna import that in a minute. So I'm just gonna delete that. Okay, now I'm gonna bring these up and I'm going to ungroup with the button in the right hand corner. When you click on the individual images and you look over in the right hand panel, as I previously mentioned, when you see it listed there, it's an individual group because that's how I save them. Any image that goes with one image is a group. And then I group all of the images together. If you look at the envelopes, you'll see that there are lines on the inside. 
that would assume that those are score lines. If we look at our sizing guide, you'll see on the pattern for this envelope front that I have written out here where the score lines are. So what we want to do is click on that image in the right hand layers panel. You'll see that it's highlighted. We want to click the top image and you'll look over here on the canvas and see that it's on the inside of the lines. That's what's highlighted. So we want to go up to the operations, click on basic cut and change that to score. The lines are now a dotted line. We want to select both of those images, go back down to the lower right hand corner and click attach. And now this is one image. It will cut and score. Let's do the same for the second one. We're going to click on it, come over to the right hand panel, click the first image, make sure that it's clicked on the inside lines and not the outside. If you click the bottom one by mistake, you'll be able to see that it's clicking the outside image. So click the top image, go up to operation, the little down arrow and hit score. Grab both of those images and attach. Now these do not have any lines in them. So those are single cut images. You don't need to do anything to them. So I'm going to go ahead and grab all of those again now that I'm done with the scoring and I'm going to group those together. It's just something I'm going to do because I like to keep mine a little bit more organized. You don't have to continue to group everything. I'm going to hide that. We're going to come back to our upload and we're going to select the album covers that we uploaded as an all files image. Click add to canvas and this gets imported as well. Extremely large. We go back to our thumbnails and we see the group file size. We change the width to 14.011. Undo the lock and change the height. Now I'm going to ungroup. Now I forgot to mention this in the last example, but I check every single one of my files when I import them into Cricut. Even when it's a group image and I'm changing the size, I have still found that sometimes the images themselves are not the right size. So let's just go through a few. So over here, we have these two layers. The bottom white one is the front album cover. This should be 6.75. And as you can see up here, it is not. So I need to change it. I would just recommend checking all of your images. That's all I can say. It's just how Cricut works. I don't understand it. I don't think people that have Silhouette have the same issue. I really wish they would figure that out. <laughs> so I just suggest incorporating them as all files and then going through and making sure each of your images are the exact file size that I mentioned in the sizing guide. So I showed you how to do these two. And I wanted to mention also for this one that this particular one here has three layers. We have the deco layer, the matting layer, and then the base layer. The base layer or the white one is what is used to cut out the chipboard for your cover. The gray layer, which is for matting, if you want to have a closer border to the edge of the cover, use that one. If you want an eighth of an inch border, then use this one for your pattern paper, okay? And then the only other one with lines is the base page, and that's pretty easy. The one on top is the deco. Again, you would click on it. You'll see over here in the right-hand panel that it's a group. Click those lines. 
over in the operation area. Change those to score. And you want to grab those and attach. And now that one's ready to go. But again, highly recommend checking the sizes of everything once you've imported them, okay? So that's it, everyone. I think that's everything you might need to know to use the materials that I provide in the bundle. So if you have any additional questions, leave those down in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to you and I'll see you next time.